Hey everyone, it's Ron Johnson. This is Ron Johnson show on Locked On Sports Minnesota. Today's show, we got to talk about Daniel Hunter holding out, not going to mandatory minicamp. Now, is that a big deal if he were just saying, you know what, I'm out for certain reasons? Yes, it still is. Holding out for mandatory minicamp. I don't care what the reason is. There's always something to it, but I kind of have an idea what's going to happen if you look at the rest of the NFL. Saquon Barkley doing it as well. What are the similarities between these two? We'll talk about that next, coming up on the Ron Johnson Show. Locked on Sports Minnesota Podcast. It's endless Minnesota Vikings talk with the diverse voices of your local experts. Now the Ron Johnson Show. On the field, in the broadcast booth, Ron Johnson is Minnesota sports. He's played with them, hung out with them, and grown up with all the big names in Minnesota sports. They're hanging out with Ron Johnson. It's the Ron Johnson Show on the Locked On Sports Minnesota podcast. And it starts now. Hey, everyone. This is Ron Johnson. This is the Ron Johnson Show on Locked On Sports Minnesota. Today's show is kind of loaded. We got Brevin Span Ford uh, tight in. I mean, gigantic tight end for the Minnesota Gophers. In the NFL, the tight ends are becoming more and more and more important. Every year we see the emphasis on the tight end. We're going to talk to Brevin Span Ford and see about his opportunity this season with the Golden Gophers and the fact that Ethan Kalik Manis is taking over at quarterback and how does he feel this season is going to go. But we have to talk about, in the open, Daniil Hunter. Daniil Hunter is holding out a minicamp. And I'm going to bring my uh, producer, Sam Ekstrom, into the show. And before we, like, completely jump into this Daniil Hunter talk, Sam, because uh, it's, it's, it's perplexing, I guess I'll say. It's, it's one of those things where you're wondering what's next. What's the next domino to fall? Because we talked mm -hmm. about dominoes with Zadarius and so on and so forth. And I want everybody to know, before we jump into this, this episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Just make every moment more by visiting fanduel.com backslash locked on to get started today and i told you what did i say sam i lock i said if you want to lock go bet on the Denver nuggets to win this thing because they were going to close it out I, I knew being at home being able to push uh, uh jamal murray into the cold tub and all that kind of stuff uh jokic you could see he's not a partier he's not a party guy he didn't even know what to do with the champagne he drank some the other bottle he looked at, like, what do I do? He kind of shook. Did he know that they of, won the championship? I, I don't think, I think someone that. needed to tell him. They said, hey, you know, the parade's coming. He's like, when? Thursday? Oh, man, I just want to go home. I got to like, fight back to Serbia tomorrow. Come on. So he's got to call his, his uh, flight attendant or not, I mean, his, uh, his um, what's it called? Your travel agent. He's got to call the travel yeah. agent, uh, his agent or whoever, his marketing director, somebody in his camp. He has to call to say, hey, we got to change this flight up. Um, I, I got a parade to do on Thursday, unfortunately. Like he he did not seem super, and maybe it's just because it's the first Denver Nuggets championship ever. Maybe that's why. Maybe that was a little bit of, of it because he just was trying to figure out what, what's up, what's down. I'm I'm super exhausted. So we do know that in 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 moments of a high stress, uh high relief, you know, when people make it out of stuff or they overcome stuff, uh sometimes your synapses are just firing everywhere. You just, you're overstimulated. And maybe that's what it was. Maybe he's overstimulated. Uh, maybe he's not for the spotlight. Uh, like you said, he just wants to go home. <laughs> so that, they're like, dude, we got a parade. Everybody else was like, man, I can't wait to have some beer on the, and some, some, some bourbon. I saw, I saw uh, Clay Thompson drunk last year. I want to do that. Not Jokic. He's like, man, I just want to go home. Can I go home? Like, do I have to be at the parade? Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how he acts at the parade, too, because, I mean, everybody's going to have the goggles and their drinks and the trophy, but I feel like he's going to be the one like, eh. I think eh. his brothers could get after it. They look yeah. like they'd enjoy a good time. Yeah, which is weird because his brothers do look like party guys, like Bron Gronk's brothers and Gronk is a partier, but Jokic, and maybe around family he's different. Maybe he is different around family, and, and for the media he's trying to keep it composed. So I can appreciate that, but he did have fun. I mean, him and Jamal Murray, he pushed Jamal Murray in the pool. They were in there playing around. Uh, but just his, his champagne celebration, just he, it, you could tell he hadn't practiced. A lot of guys practiced it. He hadn't, he didn't know how to shake it up. He was just like, all right, man, whatever. Let me just drink this. And then can we, can we go on this press conference? I got to go home. My kids are, my kids are up late. It, it, I'm tired. It's Denver. The altitude is too high. I got to get out of here. Um, but congratulations to the different nuggets and to those from uh, the locked on family. 
uh, the Locked On Sports family and the Ron Johnson show every dayers that listened and put their money on the Nuggets to win it Um, because it happened. They won it in five. Jimmy Butler is going to have to go back in the lab again and uh, figure out maybe they'll get Tyler Hero the whole season next year. We'll see what happens. And and the fact that they finished eighth, um, we'll see where they end up with this draft because they were the eighth seed. Um, so we'll see. I don't know if it I don't know if the NBA, and I've never looked into this, if it matters how you finish or how you start at the playoffs. Like if the eighth seed is where your playoff is, or you're the number two team. Cause I always wonder that too. Right. Yeah. Are they the are they 29th pick or are they like the 15th pick? Right. Well, would eighth would be 16. Difference. So they're at least like 16, 15 because they were the eighth seed. Um it looks like other- it's it's based on record. So they're the 18th pick. Oh yeah, see? So yeah. they'll get maybe they get a decent possible decent first round guy that can help out maybe they get walker kessler type and they don't trade him like the timberwolves did but we're not gonna talk about that it's not the show today we're gonna talk about another minnesota sports team and that's the minnesota vikings daniel hunter has announced he's not going to mandatory minicamp he's gonna hold out uh we know he wants a new contract or he wants to be traded or they want to trade him who knows who knows the whole purpose is behind this and this could be a partnership holdout it could be the vikings also saying hey look one, you don't need to come for this media circus because uh, they're just going to ask you a million questions about being, tra- you know, possible trades. We are trying to trade you. Let's, we're going to give you a heads up because they're a classy organization. So maybe they have alerted him. They're going to try to trade him. Um, and or or he really just does want a new contract because he wanted it last year and he came back. And now he's, you know, and the reason I put the two correlations together, Saquon Barkley's holding out of the Giants camp. He also said, I have to July, like he looked at the camera and said, I have to July 27th, right? And then did that. So, Daniel Hunter probably is on that same page. After July 27th, not until it's time to officially report, um, or and, and that's the Giants' timeline, July 27th. I don't know what the Vikings' timeline is for Daniel, but the Giants' July 27th is, is uh, Saquon Barkley's timeline, uh, which gives them, what is this, the 12th, 13th today? Gives them some substantial time to be able to locate a contract opportunity, look at the salary cap for the Giants. Um, but we're seeing a lot of running backs get cut. James Robinson, now he had only signed for a $4 million deal with the Patriots uh, from the Jags, but he got cut. Uh, we, we already saw Ezekiel Elliott get cut. We saw Dalvin Cook get cut. Saquon Barkley, I mean, who knows? Um, we saw defensive ends getting released. I mean, it's teams now are, are putting all their money on receivers and quarterbacks. I think that's where the league's headed. Um, guys like Daniel Hunter, you do want somebody to get after the quarterback, but maybe it's, a guy, maybe it's about multitude. I always, like, I always like a word, you know that, Sam. Maybe it's about multitude and not magnitude. Ah, there it is. It's multitude over magnitude. The magnitude is the high volume of a Daniil Hunter. That's the high impact magnitude of a Daniil Hunter. The multitude is the ability to cut Daniil, take all that money, and go get you three guys that could possibly help you on your defense. Maybe it's multitude over magnitude. We know that's the case with, with Dalvin Cook. But like, look, we're, we're going to have a bevy, a plethora, mm-hmm. a gaggle of running backs. It's not just going to be about Dalvin Cook this year. It's going to be about Justin Jefferson and this bevy, gaggle, plethora of running backs in our backfield, lead, lead it by uh, leading with Alexander Madison. But, I mean, it is what it is. If Daniel Hunter's gone, I, at this point, I'm not going to be shocked. I'm going to be upset uh, just because that's another guy. Like I said, that's the guy that you know, I bought to the Gophers game, him and uh, Linval Joseph. They came and hung out with me uh, to watch P.J. Fleck go to work. Uh, I think it was against Maryland, too. They won that game. Um, Probably I think it was Maryland because it's Maryland. Yeah. yeah, it might have been Maryland. I can't remember what game it was, but I know BC Johnson was there as well, um, which I think he like knew one of the coaches on Maryland's team or something like that too. Um, but it is what it is. If Daniel Hunter is gone, it's just again another puzzle piece into this off season of, of things that have happened to the Minnesota Vikings. But Sam, I don't know. What do you? I mean, do you think there's a reason to be alarmed that he's holding out? That it's serious, or this is just one of those? Look, I'm just going to hold off and wait to training camp. Yeah, I think it's a business move on Daniil's part. If you think about a couple of years ago, he gets hurt in in kind of uh, I don't I wouldn't say non contact, but it didn't take much for him to mess up his neck in a in a practice setting um, three years ago. True, and he is one injury away from kind of tanking his value. Right, he's got to stay healthy uh, at all costs as he negotiates this new deal, whether it's True. with the Vikings or or the next team. So I get why he he's holding out. He doesn't want to step foot on a football field in a situation that he can't control. Um, but when I hear about holdouts, I hear about trade offers. 
makes me think that this isn't the negotiations aren't going great, Ron. I mean, clearly there's a big difference between the two sides. And Ian Rappaport said they offered him a Band-Aid deal for this year. It sounds like maybe just like a one-year thing uh, to give him a little more money this year. That's not what he wants. He no. wants long-term security. He wants a, a nice, juicy third contract that can get him through his 20s into his 30s. And uh, the Vikings seem hesitant to give that to him because they're they're very much about kind of you know jettisoning these veterans from the old regime. So uh, I don't know if it's going to go well for for Daniel with this negotiation. They might need to trade him for him to find a landing spot. Yeah, and, and that's the tough thing about money in business. Like I said, we could put up a picture. I got a couple pictures of me and Daniel Hunter at the Gophers game uh, when when we were in the press box at the Vikings game. The season he was hurt, he and I had connected a bunch that year too. Um, I mean, we could put up the text messages between me and Daniel and then play the, you know, sad music behind it. Um, but it's not about that. Like, I've already dealt with that with Adam Thielen. Uh, we're, we're going through it again. And and nothing changed. I still like uh, Mrs. T, Mrs. Thielen still comments on my my stuff. We still, you know, I still get messages from them every once in a while. Um, you know, my daughter's softball, blah, 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 because I know their, their sons are playing baseball now. So it is what it is. It's a business. Uh, it, it does get personal. I know, you know, on the Pat McAfee show, we talked about that, like the guys that he loves, his guys. Uh, you're going to have that. You're going to have your guys. And Daniil and Adam Thielen were, were two of them. You know, uh, anytime, like I remember asking, uh, not asking, sorry, Daniil Hunter asked me after I took him to the Gophers game. Um, speaking of Gophers, Brevin uh, Spanford is going to join us in the next segment. Um, I remember getting them tickets to the game. Like I reached out to the Gophers and said, Hey man, I got some Vikings want to come to the game. Uh, PJ Fleck and the Gophers took care of me. Like, Hey man, we got you. Like, we'll get you. What do they want? They want a sideline pass. They want to be in the suite. So we ended up, we, we got like the, 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 we reached out to the AD even and got them passes to be in the suite. They didn't want to be in the suite. They wanted to be on the field. So they stood down on the field. Like we did the pregame show. They stood down on the field after that. Uh, so it's kind of cool. You know, they, they hung out. The, the funniest was like walking to the stadium and my kids are with me and you got, you know, Daniel Hunter's huge. Limbaugh's mm -hmm. huge. Shamar mm -hmm. Steph, it was Shamar Stephens was with him. He's <laughs> huge. And then you see like my two little, I, it was like years ago. So my, my, my daughters were really little and, and I, I got to find that picture or video, but like my eight year old uh, at the time, she had to be like four, maybe or five. I don't remember, but she's like looking up at Linval, like and, and Daniel, like, Oh my God, these guys are like, dad, you're big, but these guys are huge. Like I could see her thinking that, but she didn't say it. And then, you know, and Lynn Ball's like talking to him. Daniil's talking to him. So great guys. Like that, that's one of the things people don't, the stories people don't hear. Uh, like we were walking to the Gophers because we parked. We all parked, you know, did the pregame show. And then those guys met me kind of like right at the, uh, the, the, the Fox entrance where we do our show. And then we walked to the stadium like going in and then went through the security and all that stuff. And just they were cool, you know, like they, they were just talking to my kids and talking to my wife about track and, you know, they were joking around about that. And it was just, it was really wholesome. Uh, if there was a camera following us, people would have been like, man, that's some wholesome content right there. These guys are gentle mm -hmm. giants. Um, Cause that's my daughter. I could see her looking up like, man, this dude is like, you guys are big. <laughs> and it was cool, you know, but we took, I think, I think one of my daughters is in the picture. I got to find a picture, but I think one of my, I think she's in one of the pictures. Uh, with them send but, it over we'll put it on top of this we'll <laughs> we'll put it in the show i have to find a couple pictures you have to find a couple pictures um they're deep in the phone from years ago uh but like i said we got brevin span for join us today uh it is what it is it's a it's a testimony tuesday uh so we might have to testify in the, in the third segment uh with uh the daily three that's three questions probably gonna be one minute each because we're spending a decent amount of time with brevin span forward but i want everybody to know thank you to all of our partners uh fan duel uh, XM radio, XM sports app, uh, you, 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 Roku. So if you have a Roku device or Amazon fire device, just go on there, download the app. Same thing on the XM radio app. You can download locked on sports, Minnesota. Uh, we, we really appreciate it. We're, we're seeing videos blow up now. We're seeing a lot of content. I know one of my testimonies, Sam told me hit 13,000 in like the first day. So that was cool. Uh, so we're going to stick with it, people. We, we appreciate you. Uh, but also remember YouTube, all you need is an email address. You can go on YouTube. You can download our show. You can get it live right there every time it's uploaded. And uh, we have a word from our sponsors. Yeah, we're brought to you by FanDuel. Once again, we had a champion crown last night in basketball. The Nuggets won. The Heat covered the spread. Will we have another champion crown tonight in hockey? Vegas at home, just like Denver, trying to close it out. They are minus 182 on the money line. Panthers trying to extend the series. They are plus 150 to win tonight in Vegas. You can bet that and plenty more. 
at FanDuel, the best place to bet the playoffs. And if you're a new customer, you can get a no sweat first bet up to $2,500 back in bonus bets. If your first bet doesn't win, yes, $2,500 back. Safe, secure, easy to use. You get paid instantly. And they've got great promotions going on all the time at FanDuel. Hundreds of ways to wager. Every sport, every line. Check it out. Get that no sweat first bet for new customers. It's FanDuel. Make every moment more. Well, thank you to FanDuel Sportsbook. But uh, next up, we got Brevin Span Ford. Uh, Gophers tight end. I met Brevin a while ago, but I mean, one of the most uh, memorable was actually at a Gophers softball game. Speaking of a uh, big temperature of the year, Autumn Peace, who joined the show, uh, met him at the, the, the uh, softball game because he was an intern. So Brevin Span Ford is not just your normal college athlete that just does the bare minimum. He's doing it all. He also has Brevin's Barbershop uh, on some of the Gopher Social, so check that out. Uh, but let's bring Brevin into this, to the uh, show. He's a gigantic tight end, uh, plays for the Gophers. Um, keep, an, keep an eye out on that name, people. I mean, I know we talk a lot of NFL stuff, um, but this is a guy here that I truly believe. I mean, I, I was able to watch him live. I mean, all my games I watch live, but just being on the sideline for the Indiana game on the road was different. Uh, cause different environment and it got a chance to talk to his coach. And so Brevin, man, I jump out there about that, man. When you look at your frame and I know, you know, this. people have told you this, uh, you're built and you have an NFL body, you know, you have the size to do things that other tight ends can't do, which is jump balls, fade routes, all that stuff. Um, but you came back, you came back for another year. What was one of the main reasons why you wanted to come back? Um, I would say <clears throat> the big thing that, uh, promoted me to stay is, uh, the first class education and, uh, teammates that I have here at the University of Minnesota. Um, Coach Fleck has done a great job. I've I've loved playing under him. Uh, I've played under him. This will be my sixth season, obviously. But uh, I've learned so much uh, as a man and as a football player, and uh, I felt that my, my work here wasn't done. So uh, just coming back and being around my teammates has been – it's been a blast this summer, so. Yeah, we had Tyler Newbin on earlier this summer, and he said the same thing. Like, he felt like the work wasn't done. He loves the culture, loves P.J., um, what is it about the roll the boat culture that sticks with you the most and you're going to take on with you as you become an adult and head to, uh, you know, wherever NFL work life, whatever it is, what, what, what is the roll the boat culture done for you? Um, it's, it's truly not for everyone. Um, there, there is days where it's, you know, there's no, there's no bad days. There's only hard days. Uh, that's something that coach Fleck always instills in us and, uh, that it kind of shows you that like, that's how life is going to be. Um, there's not going to be a, a day in life where you're completely comfortable. Uh, you got to kind of go out of your comfort zone and, you know, do things that haven't been done to go to places you haven't been. So um, that's, that's, that's what I usually take from the rollerboat culture is just uh, there's no bad days, only hard ones. Man. I like that. I like that. I, that honestly, man, like I, I, I truly love that because I'd never heard it that way. There's no bad days. There's just hard days. And I, and I, and I def I definitely understand that. It's kind of like, putting a bow on a bad situation, understanding that it's just tough. You got to deal with it. Like you can't fold. And some people do fold. I mean, we know that in society, mm -hmm. mental health, people fold, they give up, they quit, uh, they walk away. I know for me, my motivation, I know, you know, you guys, PJ kind of tells you, you know, whatever it is, visualize or we'll figure out what you're doing it for. My why is my family, you know, my daughters. I know I can't just give up. I know I just can't pack up and say, I'm done with this. I can't just sit in my room uh, cause I'm sad or whatever. Um, and, and so I know that's my why. When you think about your why, you know, what is your why? Why do you do everything you do? I would say my family as well. Um, I got three little nephews, uh, they're my, my brother's kids. And uh, I know they're always looking up to me. So just making sure I'm always a good example for them. And uh, and just, just my friends and family, close-knit group, uh, just making sure that uh, they know I'm always doing my best and uh, sacrificing and doing everything I can for them. So. And your parents, man, I met your parents before at the games. Uh, your dad is probably one of the most like emotional cheerleaders I've ever seen in my life. Uh, has he been like that your entire, like when you were in high school dunking a basketball or, or catching a, like, has he always been that guy that's like, oh, that's Brevin's dad. Cause look at him over there. Like, has, has that been him his whole life? Yeah. He's, he's, <laughs> he's, always, he's always prided himself on being my biggest fan, but also my biggest critic. And, uh, you know, I, I can never thank him enough for that. Uh, always being at all my games and supporting me and let me know when I do something wrong, whether I like it or not. So, yeah, man. And you know, the thing about you, your size, um, I, I, I mean, cause what, how tall are you? Six, seven. Right. So six, seven with cleats on your six, eight, 
what, 250, 260 pounds, give or take. Yep. Um, still can dunk a basketball. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, I always love to get into basketball talk. People know that for the everydayers that, that always watch the show, we, we continue to thank you. But everybody knows, I don't care who it is, it could be an NFL player. I mean, because we, we did that with a couple of the NFL Vikings guys we had on the show. I uh, did that with Justin Jefferson. We did that with Adam Thielen. Uh, we, we always love to talk basketball because uh, Justin Jefferson, by the way, just to give you a little – I had Justin Jefferson pick a, a five. I said, pick five players on your team that you would take to go hoop. If the NFL were to reach out and say, look, we're going to have a basketball tournament, um, like, like, a, like a white man can't, can't jump type of movie situation on Prime Video, you're going to go play basketball. Pick five. He didn't even pick Adam Thielen. Adam Thielen was in his receiver room. He didn't even pick his own receiver. Go with him. <laughs> so that was one of the funniest moments ever. I think it's on my Instagram, but that was one of the funniest moments ever. And then the other one, um, I can't remember who it was. But it was another guy, and he just he basically just said, "Oh, oh no, it was just Jefferson too." He was just like, "Yeah, I'm the best. I'm the best on the team. Like no, no question. Nobody, nobody on the team is better than me." So I love the I love the cockiness outside of the football world because I'm a, I'm a basketball guy. Oh, and then it was Tyler Newman saying that PJ never would play him one on one, like you know. <laughs> um, so yeah, so so I like I like that part of it too because I know Terrell Smith can't hoop. He was on here too. He can't hoop at all. I just can tell he doesn't look like a hooper. Yeah, he not. Um, <laughs> But we'll, we'll get into the basketball talk. But when you look at the NFL and the body type of these guys, Travis Kelsey's, so on and so forth, who are some guys you watch on film? Because I do know PJ does give you guys that opportunity to check out NFL-type plays, guys, uh, just to, like, get an idea of, of how you can create your game. Who's, the, who's some guys you look at? Yeah, I think uh, the tight end position is really unique because there's such a wide range of skill sets. So uh, you got to be able to watch a, a, a surplus amount of tight ends. So – Guys I usually watch are obviously Travis Kelsey, um, Dallas Goddard uh, oh. from the Eagles, played at South Dakota State. Uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's a great guy to watch, uh, very great after the catch. Um, Mark Andrews is another guy. Um, it's, so, it's so cool watching them and how they complement their system so well. So uh, just like kind of picking up on how they do things, uh, whether that's little mental things to get themselves open, using their mind rather than their feet or body. Mm -hmm. um, or else just, you know, just scheme things. Uh, I think a lot of things from the Kansas City Chiefs, their their offense has been so prominent the last couple of years that it's it's hard to not look at their offense and try to gain gain knowledge from them. And when you think about your abilities, and now you have a new quarterback, Nathan Kelly Manis. You had Tanner Morgan for 17 years. The last 17 years, Tanner Morgan has graced the, the, the state of Minnesota. Uh, him and PJ now look alike. They've been around each other long enough that they now look like twins. Um, I did hear a story. I think we had PJ, PJ Fleck on the PJ Fleck show and also interviewed Tanner Morgan. I think he said like there was a, there was either like a camp or a freshman's like freshman, some type of freshman event. And they came in and a couple of the guys like came up to him because his back was turned or something and thought he was PJ Fleck. <laughs> no, it is scary. It is scary. It is scary how much Tanner does look like Coach Fleck. And so, you know, when you think about that and the amount of time you spent with Tanner Morgan, one, you know, we'll talk about that. But what is it like now, you know, in your thought process of because Ethan is younger, you know, what I mean, like you guys are going to help him have to help him along with some of this stuff. Um, but but what have you been doing with Ethan this offseason to kind of gel and really make sure like he knows, hey, hey, man, like I'm an outlet in this play or I'm the guy like if we're in the red zone, we got to create some type of synergy like Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey. Yeah, I would say just connecting with them, whether it's on or off the field, um, just building that relationship. Uh, it's, it's, it sounds weird, but, uh, you know, when you spend time with people outside of, outside of, outside of the facility and things like that, uh, your, your chemistry on the field get, goes through the roof. Um, of course, you know, we're throwing routes and things like that every day. We're working on improving our offense every day, but I would say just like the little things outside of the facility is what we I've really been, you know, priding myself on making sure, check in on him, see what he's doing, things like that, and that goes for a bunch of the guys on the team as well. So, and I mean, every every quarterback has a different skill set, and we know Ethan Kellogg, man, is like can be good. How good can he be? We'll see. But what makes him different from Tanner Morgan? Uh, I would say his confidence level. Um, Tanner Tanner is a very poised quarterback. And, uh, you know, I, I, I believe in I've believed in Tanner since, you know, since I stepped foot on campus. Uh, but I'd say just the difference is the more relaxedness of Ethan, I'd say. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of hard to, you know, put into words, but yeah. he just has like a, a, a subtle, you know, cockiness to him that, you know, a competitor should have. And Tanner has that same competitiveness. Uh, he just shows it in a different way. 
And so for Ethan, I mean, that that definitely has to like this offseason for sure. But in the huddle when he had to come in games, kind of settle down the offense and say, hey, Ethan, he has this. Like he's he's good. Like we don't need to worry that Tanner got hurt. Like does that is that kind of how that happened when Tanner went out? Yeah, Ethan came say, in and kind of yeah. I would say that confidence was really instilled by Tanner. Um hmm. and Tanner letting him know that like you can go be the guy. Um and I, I think that was a really cool thing to see. Um obviously we didn't Obviously, you don't. You never want to see someone hurt. I I hated seeing Tanner hurt, but uh, he made sure he stepped up and made sure that Ethan was ready week by week. Uh, so now, just having Ethan and Cole Kramer uh, there, and they kind of have to bounce off each other and and be and be that light for each other. Uh, it's it's different not having Tanner Morgan around, but uh, at the same time, it's cool to see how they they work together. And it, I'm really excited to see what they do this year. Yeah, and, and for PJ, I know that was he always would say that on the PJ Flex show. Like Tanner Morgan is a is a team first guy. He's he's one of the most you know giving guys. He's one of the most selfless guys. And so you know from that story there, clearly because yeah, a lot of quarterbacks wouldn't like do that. They wouldn't give. Uh, and, and and I'm I'm older, so I know I don't know if you've seen the movie with Jamie Foxx when Jamie Foxx played quarterback at any given Sunday. I don't know if if you guys watched that, but I know when Cap got hurt and Jamie Foxx took over it wasn't an immediate like, hey, this is your team. Go out there and get it. It was like, oh, I'm, I'm going to be back soon, man. Like, well, don't worry, guys. Like, you guys just have to deal with this guy for a little bit. Like, he didn't instill that in Jamie Foxx. Jamie Foxx just was Jamie Foxx for the movie, and he was, a, you know, he was really beaming. So, um, but that that's cool to hear that, that Tanner Morgan – uh, was completely it for Ethan. He was a team first guy, and I and I knew that going into this. But a, another funny story too about Tanner Morgan is he's married, and people knew that. But for you being his teammate in college, because you guys are college kids, you guys are talking about like you don't have bills. I mean, you might have bills like cell phones and other stuff, but you don't have like real bills. Like you don't have a mortgage. You don't have you know to pay for your kids' school and all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, you guys are college kids, and then you look over at your teammate, your quarterback in the locker, a couple down, and he's married. You know, he's talking about he's got to go home for dinner. And, you know, he, he, you know, blah, blah. We went to sleep last night at 8 30 p.m. How, how much did, how much crap did you guys give him for sometimes acting like an old man? You know, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even say it was crap. It's just <laughs> like you already knew Tanner, Tanner has those old man tendencies. But uh, that's what we, that's what we love about him. Uh, no, it was, it was always good. You know, there'll be, there'll be times you get to go out, go out to dinner or something like that with Tanner. And, uh, You'll you'll maybe crack a couple jokes at him like got to get home to the wifey, and things like that. <laughs> but you know it was never never anything too crazy. Cause I remember when it, I remember when, I mean because when I was with the Ravens it was different. We had really old guys like we had guys on the team, uh, and not really old. I mean now I feel I feel old saying it, but they were like 32, 33, 34, you know, and for us being 21, 22, 35 year olds playing football seemed old. And I remember, I think it was Frank Sanders was the receiver. I don't know for those who remember Google and play for the Arizona Cardinals came to the Ravens uh, my third, my second or third year. And uh, I'll never forget. He hurt his back. And so um, we came back to the locker room and somebody had got him a Walker with the tennis balls and all and put it by his locker. <laughs> <laughs> and he actually took it to meetings. Like he's like, screw it, y'all gonna mess with me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play into it. And so he like took the walker to the meetings. And I remember he walked into the meeting room with the walker. And Brian Billy looked at him like, are you guys kidding me right now? Like, why are y'all doing? And Brian knew. Brian knew, you know, the jokes and the stuff. And I mean, he knew. I mean, Rex Ryan, who was our defensive coordinator at the time, became head coach of the Jets. We had a we had an off season um, like OTAs, mini camp. Uh, we call it the jungle. We, it took us all the way to training camp because it took our mind. And you know, man, training camp is boring and you have to find ways to have fun and get through it. So we created the jungle. It was just an opportunity for you to maybe steal it. We created the jungle. Every position was an animal. So the receivers, uh, I think we were like leopards or something. The tight ends were tigers. The linebackers were the lions because it was Ray Lewis. So, you know, they were the kings of the jungle. Um, the, the offensive linemen were elephants uh, because Ray didn't mess with them. They didn't mess with Ray. Um, the, the defense alignment were hippos because they were absolute idiots and they would attack anything, anybody, anytime. And then the defensive backs, and you can agree with this, they were hyenas because hyenas will attack each other and they will attack everybody. They will be off on their own and they were sneaky little like critters and they just, you never know what a DB was going to do. And so that was the jungle. And so we would literally have jungleistic type of like fights. Uh, you know, when the elephants would attack, you know, you, I mean, it was just like, you can't fight elephants. Like when all the offensive linemen attack together, it's over. Like, you're not going to beat them. I don't care how many of you guys it is. It, it could be, cause I remember the offensive linemen fought the DBs one day, just as a joke, funniest ever. 
it was like because it's like 12 dbs i think but we only had like nine offense linemen murder they just <laughs> absolutely slung them around but i'll never forget rex ryan walked into the locker room one day and we had a piece of tape and it was like hey don't come past this line because this, this is the jungle rex ryan tried to test it out walk past the line the hyenas attacked him they threw him they threw him in the uh this is back when you had hampers i don't know how you guys do your clothes now but we you know you had the little string and you put your clothes on you throw it in the hamper they threw rex ryan in the hamper and then rolled him out down the ramp of the of the uh, equipment room and he ended up in like the parking lot so that's just yeah I don't know if we could do that. It might get, it might get a little <laughs> – somebody going to take it too far in the facility. I know someone will. But that was our – I think that was like 2004. How old were you in 2004, by the way? Four. I was four years old. Yeah, you were born in 2000. So, yeah, so that was like back in 2004. We created the jungle. So, I know how it gets in that locker room. And speaking of that locker room, you know, you do something called Brevin's Barbershop. And it's on social media. You do it through the logos. Check it out, people. Google Brevin's Barbershop. Go to go for socials. Type in uh, Brevin's Barbershop. It'll pop up. But you started interviewing your teammates in a barbershop. Uh, what what made you want to do that? Um, I was approached with the idea by our media team. Okay. And really, really, I never really thought anything of it. Just, you know, a way to help out our media team. And I thought it'd be kind of a cool experience. Um, but then, you know, people, people really liked it. So I'm, I've been enjoying it. Uh, it's funny hearing, you know, like barbershop, barbershop, it's pretty, it's pretty different. I've never really expected to like be known for like a talk show or things like that. <laughs> but, uh, I've enjoyed it. Um, I think my teammates enjoy it and, uh, it's been cool getting to, you know, have them come on and share their stories and things they're into. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna reach out to you, man, because I got some ideas. I already talked to Ethan Calic Manis, uh marketing guy over at <laughs> IFA, um, and so we we got some things in the works that possibly could work for the entire Gophers deal. So I'm gonna have to throw your name in this list of stuff because uh, I know you guys are all for your NIL. Because I, as a former player, uh, that's my goal too, is to help you guys out. So I know I'm trying to work with some sponsors to try to make this something that could happen every week after the games. So, you know, it might be something cool, but it's, it's kind of like that, but we'll, we'll have to chop that up. Cause definitely like, you know, I I've seen your personality. We've chopped it up before. Uh, and, and I think that's what, what, what social media is about. People want to be able to identify, connect, understand. Uh, and you guys have been doing a great job, man. When you think about the end of the season, you walk away from the Gophers, you go off to the NFL, get your opportunity. Um, what is something you want the Gopher fans to remember the most about Brevin's fan forward? Uh, I would just say, you know, a, a team first guy uh, willing to do anything for his team to win. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, I just say that, um, you know, I, I've really enjoyed my time here and I look forward to this last season. But uh, I just want to be known as a good teammate and uh, someone who gave it all on, this field, on the field. So, And Chris Allman Bell is getting a seventh year. So if there's ever anybody to put a walker in front of his, I'm giving you a little tip. You don't you have might, any you credit. Might walker. You, might put the, walker. you should put the for like for, for camp. You'll go get a walker, go to the go to Gophers uh the hospital and just say, hey, can we borrow a walker <laughs> uh with the tennis balls on it and just just set it in front of Chris's deal, videotape him walking in and seeing it. Trust me, it'll go viral. Every bleach report, Chris, everybody. You we probably won't get Chris off of it. <laughs> He'll, exactly. He'll, 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 he'll take it to meetings. He'll take it with them. Like, trust me, it'll be it'll just something to do. But here, here's one last one before you get out of here. Chris Hartman Bell does have seven years. You guys are going to play USC and UCLA next year, one of them. Is there any point in your mind you thought, like, man, it'd be nice to come back for a seventh year just to do that, get some more free school and play this? Or are you kind of like, you know what, six is enough for me? You know, I love I love Coach Blake. I, he might he might say something to me for saying this, but I, I'm I'm good. I'm, I'm good. <laughs> I, I look forward to cheering those guys on though at USC and UCLA. It'll be it'll be really interesting to see see how those shake out. Yeah, and when you heard about that from because you're a basketball guy too, and and I forgot about those. I, I got a, two quick ones before we get out of here. Um, Ron Johnson's Brevin's fans forward or Brevin's fan forward, uh, and this is the Ron Johnson show. Two quick ones. Uh, one. When you heard about UCLA and UC, USC coming, like how excited did the guys get, or did you guys kind of like think it was weird? I think the guys are very excited. I mean, it's kind of it's kind of interesting knowing like there'll be new stadiums to go to, yeah. and uh, you know, kind of a new way to look at the conference and how things shake out every year. So I think I think everyone's pretty excited about it. And last one, man, you and PJ Fleck one on one going to eleven. One, I know PJ. I've heard PJ will only play like horse or pig. So playing horse or pig, who wins, or a three-point contest. But then, two, flat-out one-on-one, does P.J. have a shot to stop you? 
No. Nah. But <laughs> I will say it'll be a great matchup because I know both of us are are, are going at it. No one, no one's letting anyone win. I'm we're going at it the whole game. So maybe because I know as a player on this team, he probably doesn't want to go too hard on you now. But yeah, once you go to the NFL, you come back. Make sure you get that game in. And let me know because I want to. I want to be there to uh, be the announcer for that. PJ Fleck versus Brevin Span Ford, six seven versus five. What is he? Five ten? Maybe five eleven? Uh, you might say he's six feet. I don't know about that one. Uh, but I'm Ron Johnson. That's Brevin Span Ford. Uh, this is the Ron Johnson Show on Locked On Sports Minnesota. By the way, people, XX the SXM app from SiriusXM, one of our great partners. You can catch the Twins broadcast every time on the SXM app. But tonight, they're going to border. The border battle. Brevin Spanford knows about the border battle. Gophers, Wisconsin. He has the axe. There's no axe for the Twins and the Brewers, but it's still a border battle. 640 tonight. You can catch every pitch with the Twins hometown broadcast on the Sirius XM on the SSM SXM app. Just search Twins. And by the way, they won two out of three against the, the Toronto Blue Jays. I gave them no shot. So the good thing is they have four games coming up against the Tigers after this two-game stretch against the Brewers. So there's a chance to stay in front of the Guardians. One and a half points in, or one and a half games ahead. We'll see what happens. But coming up next, we got the Daily Three. That's three questions. We're going to take one a minute each. We'll be back after this. And now it's time for the fast-paced part of the show that I love. That's the Daily Three. That's three questions. We're going to go one minute each because we spent a little bit of longer time with Brevin Span Ford. He was great. So take it away, Sam. All right, you touched on it in the open, but let's go back to the NBA Finals Game 5 last night. Heat were up at halftime, Ron. It looked like they were going to threaten to extend the series to a Game 6. Nuggets come storming back. Jimmy Buckets turned the ball over at the end, and uh, the Nuggets win by 5 to clinch the NBA championship. Your reaction to last night's game? Well, it's a testimony Tuesday, so I got to testify. I got to go on record and saying, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to the Denver Nuggets because I did not recognize your game. Now, I did bet on you, so I appreciate you. Appreciate you for beating beating the Lakers. Um, But I didn't recognize your game early. I never gave you a shot. I said I wanted the Timberwolves to have the 8 seed because I would rather play the Nuggets than I would want to play the Memphis Grizzlies. That was a lie. That was wrong. It wasn't a lie. I truly believe that, but that was wrong. I should have said I wanted them to play the Memphis Grizzlies or the Sacramento Kings. The Nuggets is not who you want. They are the best team in the NBA. I apologize for not recognizing the the, the brilliance and the grace and the the ridiculousness of of, of Nikola Jok, uh, Djokovic, the Joker. Djokovic is just, he's ridiculous. Jamal Murray, crazy good. Aaron Gordon, revamped. New team, got his role, doesn't have to be the superstar, but he's just a big bully piece on that puzzle. Uh, Michael Carter Williams, I mean, everything. They, they are just a team that finds ways to just get it done. And, and it, it is what it is. Um, so I do have to apologize to the, to the, to the uh, Denver Nuggets. And as far as game five goes, Jimmy Butler did all he could do. The Heat, I mean, honestly, I, I'd love to see what would happen if Tyler Hero had stayed healthy. Because um, I think that was the little piece they were missing here and there. And once in a while was just an absolute score and somebody to help out Jimmy Butler because it felt like they had just got there, got it going, and then Hero, you know, breaks his hand or whatever. Um, but I don't know. I, I, but I do apologize to the Nuggets. You, you guys were legit. You dominated the whole season. Got the first championship in uh, franchise history. Yeah, th- there was a lot of weight on Jimmy to to be a superstar every single night. Uh, the Heat have a ton of nice role players, and sometimes Duncan Robinson gets hot, Caleb Martin gets hot, right? Someone, someone steps up, but. There are some times when no one steps up and Jimmy's kind of all alone. He needs a running mate. He needs yeah. someone who's like high, high caliber. Maybe it's at a bio um, to be that guy, but he needs one more piece, I think, to really be a force. And hey, they made the NBA finals. I can't, I can't knock them too much, but um, I thought their lack of offense kind of hurt him in this series. Next up in the daily three, Yannick Ngakwe, Ron, from 2020, the Vikings sack leader before they traded him. He's still a free agent, Ron. If this Daniil Hunter thing goes south, if they have to trade Daniil Hunter, would you reunite the Vikings with Yannick Ngakwe as pass rushing help this season? I would. I, I would. I mean, if, if he's going to be a cheap piece that can be added, like I said, it's about multitude, not magnitude. Um, but you said that. Y- Yannick Ngakwe, you led the team in sacks when he was here. Now, I think that was Daniil Hunter was hurt that year. Um, but Yannick Ngakwe is a force like he has shown that he can get after the quarterback and maybe it fits more of the three, four scheme where Daniel Hunter is more of a four, three. And that, that also could be the big problem with how Daniel wants a contract as a defensive end, 
but you're you're in a program now that's a 314. So why would we pay you to be a 4-3 DN when we're a 3-4 defense? So I think that's the other part of this contract that people are forgetting is not so much if they don't like Daniel Hunter is that they don't think he fits as a true outside linebacker like a TJ Watt um like 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 a like a Yannick and Gakwe like I think that's the other part of this and so maybe that could be the fit maybe they do find a trade partner for Daniel Hunter um and and they get some pieces of the puzzle maybe a second round pick third round pick for him uh but the way these GMs are playing hardball now I don't know but yeah I would I would definitely put him in a 3-4 defense because again that's about the multitude of, of guys that can come in with Marcus Davenport and uh, get up to the quarterback so yeah I, I could see that I don't think there'd be too much bad blood. I mean, I know they no, traded No, it's a totally him. different regime, though. Different regime, yeah, different players, except for, like, Harrison Smith. Yeah. Um, different coach. Yeah. I, I different think GM. Could... Like, I think I, th- I think they could sell that to him, too. Like, hey, man, look, we're not Zimmer and Spillman. You know, we're Kevin and, and uh, Kwesi. The K and K, you know, connection. The CC Music Factory. It's the KK Music Factory. Uh, but we're Kevin and, and Kwesi. Like, we we have your back, bro. Like we're not, we're not Zimmer and them. Like we don't, you know, we have a three, four defense. I think that was the other problem. Zimmer, we thought Zimmer was going to go to a three, four with uh Dom capers. And then he still stayed with a four, three. So, yep. you know, I, I think now they would say, look, look, we have what the Baltimore Ravens had. We have a three, four for you. So this, this could work. So I, I can see that. All right. Last one. ESPN took the five core players on each NFL team's roster. And then they mm-hmm. ranked those groups. So, first of all, Ron, do you want to guess who they made the Vikings' five core players? So, Kirk Cousins, Justin Jefferson, Harrison yep. Smith. No. Oh, No Harrison. Okay. Now, one of these guys is Daniil, and he might be traded, so that would probably okay. move Harrison into that group. But, yeah, Daniil. Daniil, uh, Kirk, JJ, um, Darisaw. Yep. Uh, one more. Hmm. Is it defense or offense? Offense. Oh, Alexander Madison? No. Uh, oh, TJ Hawkinson. How can I forget yeah. about TJ Hawkinson? Come on now. T- TJ. So that's the group. Yeah. So it's Kirk, JJ, Daniil, Darisaw, and Hawkinson. Where do you think they ranked that core amongst all NFL teams? A more uh, And just other teams' cores? That's yep, got to be top core. 10. That's got to be top 10. It is just outside the top 10. 11? 13. Oh. That, but you know what, though? That's the same rankings they give Kirk. Kirk is always 12 or 13. So I think yeah. that's part of it. If you put that same core, Darisaw, J.J., Hawkinson with Daniil, um, and then you add in, like, Pat uh, Pat McAfee, Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> Pat McAfee would put them in, like, 32 for sure. If Pat McAfee was a the quarterback, they would be number right. 32. Sorry, Pat. Right. I don't know if you could throw. I'm not familiar with your, with your, with your quarterback game. Um, I don't think you can do it. I don't think you can bear down. Um, but I think you, you could punt the ball. Well, I don't know if a punter would be the core players on the team, but Hey, could be. And I'm not disrespecting the kickers. Cause I know you guys love each other out there. Uh, but I would, I would say with, with Pat Mac or Pat McAfee with Patrick Mahomes, that's <laughs> definitely top five, uh, with Kirk cousins. I get it, but no, I don't agree with that. I think they should be top 10. I do. I don't know. What are your thoughts? Well, um, stunner guess who the top core is in the NFL, the chiefs. Exactly. Guess who number two is? The Bengals. The oh, Bengals. And then number three is the Eagles. So they, they are okay. heavily, heavily weighting the quarterbacks. Yep. That's all it is. It's the quarterback. Because who's four and five? Four, Bills. Four. So four, uh, five is the Bills. Yep. See? Four is the uh the Dolphins. So they're giving two us a ball with Tyreek. Quarterback, but then you Ramsey. have a bunch of uh yeah, you have a bunch of uh weapons, plus you're gonna get Dalvin Cook in Miami at some point. <laughs> so Probably. I totally, I totally get that. But yeah, it's quarterback. These rankings, when it comes to cores and offenses, it's all quarterback driven. Like you could have the best offense mm-hmm. in America, and you throw in Kirk Cousins, they're going to make them ten or thirteen. Like it's just the Kirk Cousins. It's, it's the Pat. It's the Pac Man Jones effect. Uh, how Kirk Cousins gets treated. It's not fair. It is what it is. But I'm Ron Johnson. That's Sam Metro. We want to thank you guys for joining us. We want to thank Brevin Spam 4 for joining us today on the Ron Johnson Show on the Hanging Ron Johnson segment. Uh, truly enjoyed his time. Loved his stories. Uh, loved his thoughts about Ethan Kellick Manis's confidence. I don't know if you got that from that, Sam, but I loved mm-hmm. his talk about Ethan Kellick Manis's confidence. Like Tanner Morgan had confidence, but this kid is almost cocky to a point. So I definitely like that. But again, I'm Ron Johnson. That's Sam Ekstrom. I want to thank you guys and have a great day. But remember, you can download us wherever. iTunes, Spotify, iHeartMedia, uh, YouTube, Roku, Amazon Fire, 
SXM app. We're on the Sirius XM app now, people. Locked on sports. Just go to the Sirius XM app. If you want to take it to your car on your drive to Rochester, you can go over to Big Lake. You can go up to Indiana, Ohio, Iowa. It's an app. You can take us everywhere you go as long as you have a good internet connection. We can ride with you. But if you have it in a car, just use the app in your car because I know a lot of you guys have that new XM app in your car too. And it's so nice in these new computer Teslas, whatever you have. So awesome. So you can just listen to Locked On Sports Minnesota. And it's the Ron Johnson Show. I want to thank you guys. Have a great day. <laughs>